So hi, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stopover studio visits number one. As uh, I'm Mayumi, and I'm actually with Mark Salvatus in the same room, but joining from two different computers. So we, Ron Dandito, will be the guide for today's studio visits. Stopover is a series of studio visits, which will continue until November this year. It convenes individuals and groups from physically distant places to learn about their daily experiences and practices in relation to the current situations shaped by the specific contexts. We would like to express our sincere gratitude to Japan Foundation Manila, Together We Design, and textileartmuseum.ph for their kind support to realize this project. So before we start, we would like to remind that today's session is recorded and will be uploaded on Lord Nadito's website and social media. Okay. We hope to facilitate casual interactions with all of you. So please use the chat box or raise hand to join the conversation anytime. We aim to make this gathering a safe space. Thank you for your presence, participation and sharing of your warm energies with us. Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining for our first studio visit, Stopover. And for today's session, we will start by inviting the artists to introduce themselves by way of presentation. And their practice uh, is an overview of what they have been doing in the recent years or currently. And um, after their short presentations, we will go to the studio visit that uh, we will see how it will go later. So for the first artist, can we call uh, Patrick Cruz to share your video? Uh, slide, yes, yeah, screen. Okay. okay. Uh, everyone can see my screen, okay? Is this the one? It's okay. Okay. Um, hello, uh, my name is Patrick Cruz. I'm currently based here in Vancouver, BC. Um, I guess my practice uh, has mostly been really about kind of, I don't know, thinking the role of the artist uh, in this crisis. Um, and I'm also teaching art uh, the two universities here, um, which makes me even more think like what, what I'm actually teaching. <laughs> Why do we need to learn art? Why do we need to make art? Um, I guess th those sort of questions really propel my practice. Um, uh, what you're seeing right now, I guess, is a collection of objects that uh, some are from my my family, my grandparents, some are from friends. Um, they sort of uh, stand as good reminders of uh, where I've been, where I'm going, sort of things that I always want to be reminded of. Um, this is uh, my pet. It's a weather loach. Um, I've been really into keeping a aquariums lately and actually this pet it's uh i think around 12 years old now so it's a uh, quite an old fish uh this is actually an old studio that i was working out uh from before and uh it's a uh, a very nourishing space for me so it's uh having having access to it to to think and to have time to, to reflect has been quite crucial uh, in my practice. Um, I have the most important electric fan and a bicycle. <laughs> Two things you need in your studio. Um, and this is sort of what it looks like when it's, uh, it's a big mess. Um, but I, I sent this photo because uh, I guess I was thinking of like how how chaos is quite important sometimes when you're making 
in the thick of in the thick of it i think it's actually you kind of need this uh, energy around you to 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 do something or to be moved um and uh, I guess my last slide here, I, I also love cooking and I find that cooking is really quite integral in my, in my art practice. And the idea of gathering with friends and family, um, I actually find it very nourishing uh, in my art practice. Um, and I think the most crucial thing really is you know, bouncing conversations, bouncing ideas, uh, essentially kind of what we're doing right now, even though through, a, through an online interface. Um, but with food, I feel like it's, everyone uh, feels very grounded and, you know, we become more human <laughs> as we consume food. Um, so yeah, I guess those are my uh, five slides as a kind of introduction. Um, that's a lechon belly, by the way, that I, I've uh, mastered. So uh, next time we can gather, I'll definitely cook this lechon belly. It's really good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And I think we will go to Denver, right? Denver. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, can you see the slide? Yes. Okay, just let me know if, uh, next slide. Sige. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mayumi. So, um, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Denver and I'm currently uh, an artist. Um, I do different media. media. Um, so, I'll show you a guided tour, like a few, of photos of my studio. So let's start with uh, um, this one is a picture of like a portal, I guess. I didn't, I, I forgot what. Oh, I did like a spray paint of um, some paperwork, I think. And then it looks like a portal of some sort. So I, it, look, it just looks interesting. That's why it's the cover photo. Um, so on to the next slide, please. So this is the front of my studio house, which actually um, is next to our main house or actual house here in Cavite. So on the left um, picture where there, is, there are two gates and a mango tree, um, that the, the red gate is actually leads, the space that leads to my studio. And then the brown gate is, the, is, is our main house. Um, and in between is this huge Indian mango tree. So in front of my studio are multiple plants where my mom um, and my grandma used to put a lot of plants and also our house helper, Ate Lori. So this space, I actually went back here in Cavite in 2015, 2016, when I decided to become an artist. Um, before, I was living in Santa Mesa, where I used to work as a mental health worker. Um, and so this became sort of my space after which. Um, so, yeah, originally it wasn't, I mean, it just sort of um, aligned, I guess, because this house, we acquired this house um, just like probably a year before I decided to move back in. So... Um, I used to share this space with my grandma, but she's now back in the States and she's, she's been there because of COVID and also with her health, um, she's well taken care of there. So she wasn't able to go back here. That's why on the next slide, please, you will see, I slowly sort of occupied the entire space. <laughs> so this is the, this is like, so this is the door in the left picture, and then the right is the living space. I mean, the living room space. <laughs> so this is actually a shot where whenever I um, at the back, I mean, it's a pic, it's a shot from my bedroom. So when I get up, this is the <laughs> this is the view that I um, that you could get. So it's really messy, and so 
Um, on the next slide, please, I'll show you like how I work in a way. Since my living space is also my studio, like, I mean, I'm living in it. So it's sort of um, a thing that I've been doing for quite a while. Um, so I, I find it, I, I don't find it, um, what do you call this? Um, the chaos is okay for me, I guess. <laughs> um, so working on this space is, yes. <laughs> but I think mine is really that, this messy. <laughs> so I, I work on multiple um, projects at a time. So I assign different tables, like this. these tables are for paperwork, like when I draw or paint watercolor. Next slide, please. And then, um, and then this table is actually nearest to the window, which I would, where I could do a lot of um, sewing as well, because the light is better in this room area. So, and also I like drawing as well. So, mm -hmm. next slide, please. And then, if I'm not satisfied with the tables, I work on the floor. <laughs> So I do a lot of um, sewing and also beadwork. So I literally occupy the entire living room. And then I assign spaces for whatever tasks I have to do. Next slide, please. Um, and then this other space is the kitchen area where I transformed it into a, much, into a painting space where I do acrylic or oil painting and doing a lot of assemblage work. I assemble it here since the space is bigger. Um, so yeah, and next slide, please. So that this is just the space as well, like where I do a lot of um, uh, the shot of my painting table and how I assemble stuff. Next slide, please. And so this one, formerly my room, when I went back here in 2016, I drew a huge drawing, <laughs> but then it just became a stock room um, later on. So yeah. Um, and actually that's it. Um, um, <laughs> it's yeah, a full moon shot. So. Thank you for Thank you. Visiting. Thank you, Denver. Uh, we will go to you, Hey. This is just the introduction. Yeah. So Okay, can you see my uh, slide? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, for coming. And uh, I'm Yuhei Higashikata, a uh, Japanese artist. Uh, but now uh, I'm in Vietnam. Uh, so, uh, so I'd like to uh, begin my self introduction. So, um, so now in Vietnam, um, I don't have a studio, so uh, that's why I want to start my presentation for, uh, exp uh, for show, to show two places. One is Hachinohe, it's my home. It is located in the area uh, far from Tokyo. Uh, during winter season, we have much snow. It is so cold, like, uh, like this uh, picture. I moved to here four years ago to work in the school as a teacher and still live here. So I'm working as an artist uh, at the same time at the, as a teacher in um, design and art field. Okay. Um, 
it's my uh, biography I sent to the uh, sent for the uh, project. So uh, in the university, especially I studied uh, metal sculpture and uh, I expanded my field to mixed media or more contemporary art. So I often the, make installation or with uh, my installation or some projects with metal sculpture. My artistic uh, interest is in uh, uh, paradoxical situation about uh, social issues or systems. So I'm treating it throughout my personal uh, perspectives and um, some kind of humor. So I'll show my past works. So it's a, uh, this work is named Signals. So it is combined with uh, traffic signals and uh, people who wear uh, judo, judo wear. It's a uh, Japanese uh, martial arts. Okay. So, <laughs> like this, uh, it is the writing. <laughs> Okay. And the next one is uh, the, the name is uh, Skiing Dead. So the work is uh, uh, the Skiing Dead is uh, one kind of a zombie. So who is skiing on the mountain made from steel? It's also a movie. Okay, next. Oh, but recently from such kind of uh, uh, big installation, like a sculpture, uh, I'm trying to do some uh, uh, participatory project or video project. For example, uh, the work Tengu Bucks Cafe uh, is a um, participant project uh, with uh, children. Okay, uh, uh, at the same time, uh, I'm uh, organizing some artist in residency program. Uh, so one, the port to port project is uh, uh, my thanks for Rodona Dito. I'm inviting some Filipino artists to, to uh, Hachinohe, my residency. And uh, uh, my... okay, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, it's a very, how can I say, uh, <laughs> also uh, my home state style, uh, it's very fun for me. Uh, and it's a, how can I say, one kind of art project for me, uh, we can find an alternative way to survive uh, in this modern society. And now I'm uh, in Fue, in Vietnam. So two years ago, I uh, did one project uh, named Tengu Bucks Cafe in Fue. So at that time, I made a floating field on the pond with Vietnamese people by using bamboo and uh, opened the, the cafe, just one day event. And uh, now I came back here again uh, from uh, March. And uh, after quarantine, uh, two weeks in Hanoi and uh, two weeks in Fue, my almost one month quarantine I had. And uh, my, I studied my, my project. And uh, in Fue, my, I found some, uh, my, it's just an introduction of my, um, my current situation, I found some uh, Olympic uh, symbol mark in this city, but uh, Fue, um, the, Fue uh, never has uh, uh, Olympic games here. So uh, now I thought it was very interesting and uh, I uh, began to search about it. So okay. that's all, thank you very much. Thank you, Yuhei. Uh, may we call on Neo?
Uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Neo. Neo Maestro. Uh, I'm a visual artist uh, living and working in Quezon City. Uh, and today for the studio visit, um, um, I'm going to show you a few of my recent projects to get uh, to help to get to know a bit more about my practice. Uh, this was uh, an exhibition I had last year. The title is Pinagbuhata ng Kamay, Laway, Dila, at iba pa. And then it translates uh, into uh, to use a hand, uh, saliva, and tongue against someone. Uh, it's an installation of paintings made out of wax and then a series of drawings. And then all... Uh, in the exhibition, I also worked with my father to write a text on it. And uh, it talks about our family history and how traumas are inherited. Uh, and at the same time, I paralleled it with the myth of the Aswang. Uh, the Anaswang is a, like a, the Philippine version of a vampire with traits of a witch and a werewolf rolled in into it at once. And I uh, tried to show like uh, we can, in our family, we can inherit both like the traits of uh, this supernatural creature as well as the violence uh, um, the older generation of our family has experienced. And then uh, this next work I want to show is titled uh, The Oasis in the Stairwell. Uh, it's a short story I wrote uh, during the quarantine period uh, last year. Uh, and then it's kind of like uh, my journal entries that I wrote into a narrative story. And then in the exhibition here, uh, in the installation, the first uh, and last part of the story are represented uh, visual visually with, uh, with the plant in the bucket. So I think most people who visited the, the exhibition didn't have time to read the actual story. So the plant in the bucket are a sort of a visual summary. And then uh, this is uh, a project I worked on this year with another artist, uh, Miro Kasama. She's a Japanese artist uh, based in Kyoto. Uh, in this project, she invited me to share a window view for a, uh, the project is called uh, Window Residency, in which we both of us share our window views to get a better idea what's happening on the other side of uh, each other's situations. And uh, this is a screenshot of a video I made. So uh, the, the window views from the left are from Miro. And then the window views from the right are from me. And they kind of meet in the middle. And then the text uh, below the images of the windows are lines we wrote every time uh, we had kind of um, uh, empty hours within the day in which we could um, think about just the project. And I made uh, those lines uh, into an image which um, kind of forms like a bridge along with the windows. Uh, and uh, the project is still ongoing. If you have any, if you want to share your window view with the project, you can uh, send it to us. Maybe later we can link the site. And then I also have an ongoing project uh, titled Don't Sweep at the Wake. Uh, I, in this project, I collect ghost stories from people I meet. And then I also try to um, share ghost stories that I already know. 
Um, in some iterations of the project, I tried to make um, a space for pe where people can sit down and talk about ghost stories. Uh, and it goes that um, when one ghost story is told, like another person would think up of their ghost story and it snowballs. Uh, this was uh, this iteration was done uh, during a residency in Vietnam. Here you can see people reading previous ghost stories that I've collected, and also telling ghost stories among them amongst themselves. And then uh, a related project to "Don't Sweep at the Wake" I got to do in Hachinohe with Yuhei. And Eri, Eri Shinohara is a curator based in Hachinohe. And we, we did this um, program titled um, Ghost in the Seashell, where we, Eri and I talked about um, how ghosts uh, affect uh, the art, our particular art scenes, me in Manila, and uh, uh, her knowledge of uh, ghosts in Japan and Jap in the Japanese context. And then I also got to do this uh, project uh, in art fair uh, just last year, also with Mark and Mayumi. And then I also got to do the project um, in Ansong in Korea. Uh, it was under the Rice Brewing Sisters Club program uh, titled uh, Soil, Soil Land. Uh, and in that program, they we're kind of showcasing all of their projects from uh, recent uh, years. And then they also invited artists they came in across with who could um, somehow talk about the subject of soil and how also the, uh, this kind of like the spirit that inhabits the soil. So in this project, I shared with them uh, a story that uh, ghost story that directly relates to soil in which uh, someone was possessed uh, outside our house because they didn't respect the land. <laughs> and then here are a few typical shots of a studio. I don't really have a stu typical studio, but, but I work everywhere around the house. So wherever I find I can work, I work there. So even outside, even on the roof, like uh, most of the time last year I was writing on the roof, but now I can't climb up the roof anymore because the neighbors are complaining. Well, that's it. Thank you, Neo. And we can uh, discuss more about your studio practice later and uh, we will go to Jerome as a last introduction. Hello, I'm Jerome Soyano. I'm stuck in Manila, Philippines. Uh, these are some of my works. Uh, this work was shown in the Art Fair Philippines last year. Yeah, last year, when the world was still normal. Uh, so it's I I brought some mattress and then stuck all my some of my artworks underneath them just like what I do at home and I also noticed that some other artists also do that. So yes. Then this is my work that where I use a kite to fly a camera to take photos from above. Then this is a video work um, inspired by a story by 
the late Carlos Zembran where he said that most of the structures made during the Spanish era was made of adobe, which is which he compared to chocolate, which is a Philippine chocolate delicacy candy, right? And, and I made like similar structures to to the structures found in Indramuros, the walled city, which used to be the capital of the Spaniards, and they were here. And okay, circus. I so I just photograph a bunch of circles around the vicinity because one of my friends while we were drinking said that in nature it's hard to find a very perfect circle. So I just compiled circles from different places and then turned them into a video. This one is this one was done in at Chinohe when I had the residency with Juhei. Then also I did them in other iterations. This one is like a calendar where you can flip it over. Okay. Ah, this one is a uh, is using the same circles but uh to to tell a coded message. Okay. Ah, yeah, maritime plugs. This is where my my work with coded messages start because when I was writing a jeepney, I saw a, a maritime student in jeepney and he was flipping cards. And one side is a letter or a number and the, and the other side is a maritime flag. Later on, I researched about it. And so there are like maritime flags which ships used to communicate to one another. Then I used them to, to make coded messages then I'm also very, I also do a lot of scenes, like uh, publications or publication. And this is one of my scenes. Uh, um, which is a red envelope, we usually uh, like give or receive it from, from Ninong and Ninang, Godmothers, Godfathers during the Christmas season to receive some gift money. And this one I I I use the I use my collection of photos of money and then uh, on the back I use my list of where where I spend my money. Then this is one of my yeah, installation work. Photographs like banderitas. Then like because it's expensive to print big, so I use office paper and then just uh, align them to be able to make huge prints of photos. Ah, these photos were taken using the kite. Then I also very uh, interested with the uh, some. Sa some of the science experiments I see in YouTube, and this is, and I use one for a work in Cat Cat projects, and this is another one of the scenes I make. Yeah. Okay, finish. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. <clears throat> uh, and thank you for all the artists' presentation. This is just the warm up because it's the, just the introduction. <laughs> and uh, uh, this we will move now to the second part of the program, which is the we call the stu studio visit, and it's uh, interesting now because also uh, we there's so many uh, online studio visit, but it's the, it's different when we really actually go to their visit to the studios, and uh, the studio is where also uh, not only the artists artwork are made but also other things are maybe kept and or presented so for this uh, uh, Mayumi can <laughs> explain more about this studio visit that we kind of wants to develop Mark is actually having wine 
already. <laughs> That's why he's a bit talkative. <laughs> <laughs> but so I was supposed to be the one to explain this, but I think he basically explained. The idea was because we miss, you know, some of you are talking or showing images from Art Fair Philippines. And that was like the last time we were able to gather yeah. and suddenly lockdown. And Patrick was here also in Manila doing Kamiya Strenale, which was also a big, you know, get together kind of thing. So this first round of studio visits, we wanted to bring people who we saw in the last before the lockdown. And Yuhei, we know him for a long time through Jerome, Neil, Denver, you know, very intimate exchanging. And they actually stayed in his house. So we thought, you know, this will be an important beginning for our studio visits. So um, our idea is for us to reconstruct the idea or the experience of visiting your studios. So that's why we asked you to share some images from your studio or around, from around the studios that you would not necessarily show in the gallery space. Okay. So from here, we'll be using these images and have conversations. And we would like everyone who is in this room to just jump in the conversations, not just as the host and the artists, but everyone here with us, please um, use the chat box or raise hands. Or if you like, you can just keep your microphone on all the time. Mm. Okay. And also the, in the physical studio visit, we kind of like uh, uh, the idea of bringing or coming together, right? Like when we go to, uh, for example, Patrick's studio, it's not only him talking, but also the, the visitors who are engaged with the artists and also not only the artists, but also the space, the objects that's inside. So we want to encourage the participants as part of this studio visit. So it's not only the artists who are talking, but also, I mean, everyone as part of this maybe communal space, because now the space is not any more private, but we kind of share it together. And the artists, uh, Patrick, Jerome, Yuhei, Neo, and Denver are sharing it to us. So by this uh, setup, we want to make it fun, maybe uh, informative, and also yeah, engaging by way of sharing and learning together. So, as Mayumi said, we ask the artists to share images beforehand to, and then we will share it uh, on the screen uh, more, maybe more intimately and more, I know, more deeper uh, rather than just showing the artworks. So we also thought of having a, a little bit of game before uh, showing the images. So, we put the names of the artists here. So the first one that I will pick will be sharing his studio by, by sharing the images that they sent. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> to bring your wine now. Para... I wish I had wine. I'll grab my drink. Oh, go, go. Get your wine and everything. Oh You're drinking a lot, Mark. Already, <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I will uh, get the first one. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> so it's zero. Zero. Hold on. Okay. I'll screen share. For the audience or the, the participants who wants to ask question, just type in or open your, your mic. And let it be be very you know conversational or spontaneous. Okay. So so Neo was talking about his window project with Miro and the, so this is my window view with a lot of lucky cuts and a bunch of them are from Yuhei, which he sent to me because he saw uh, one of my work in the in the show with the uh, in the group show with Mark. In blank, had a lucky card. So he, he, he sent me a lot. And then there's also a, a gandam which my friend gave it, gave it to me. 
So this is my window view. Yeah. So these What's are the, all. Oh, yeah. oh, hmm. I am Patrick. Okay. Oh, who's uh, whose room is that across across their <laughs> window? Ah, it's it's the neighbor already. Okay, so you can yeah. spy on them. Well, they <laughs> always keep their curtains and close. So it's, <laughs> I think it's more the other way around. Like I because I always open the blinds because I I need the light when I'm painting or like writing. So maybe I think they see more of me than I see them. <laughs> Jerome, Jerome, yes. say yeah, oh. is that yours? Oh. Why are all the cats facing the neighbor? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I just took my beer. <laughs> because they have more money than us. <laughs> <laughs> and there is should bring back the luck. They're so, they they so like powered. So they need the, the uh, sunlight uh, to keep on waving. <laughs> Do you feel luckier with all of them around? <laughs> so far, yes. Like yes. yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Jerome, there's a question um, from Angela. Yeah, yeah. She, sorry, she said sorry. that, that we need to. The cat needs to the solar power to keep you know, swinging. Yes. <laughs> and also, from time to time, I need to wipe them because. It gets dirty too. Yeah. <laughs> get tired. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, can I? Can I ask? Sure. Yeah, you can. Yeah. It's very interesting for me in Vietnam. Uh, uh, in Vietnam, I can find um, many, many uh, lucky cats here mm -hmm. in Vietnam. Mm. So in Japan it's also common, and in Vietnam it's also very very more common. Mm. So that's why oh. I can imagine the, how the culture, uh, uh, culture coming from uh, mm. China mm. or spread to, to Japan and Vietnam. It's very how can I say uh, very very interesting situation for me. Mm. How how was the how is the uh, Gundam? <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. <laughs> it's, it's it's quite dirty. I need to wipe it more open. <laughs> okay, we move to the next image. They're okay. ready. Yes. Yeah. Wait, am I behind? Wow. So, how do you say? Maybe around two thousand. Maybe around two thousands, like this iron bracelet and necklace got famous. Like they said that <laughs> it helps with you with energy. So, so like how they say, like I don't know. Like scientists debunk it, and like used to be like sports, like athletes suits used to wear them, and there's used to be a lot of fake ones in the streets, but. I don't know. For me, they work, kind of work. Like I feel more energetic when I wear them, and then when I when I when I take them off, I get sleepy. Then also the dice are the twenty-sided dice because I used to play a lot of Magic the Gathering card game. Mm. Then, uh, but then I stopped because it's so expensive. Mm -hmm. and then, then, so, but. But then, like, uh, I I asked some of my friends who still play the game to, like, for some dice, like, some of the newer dice, because they look more fancy. Like, the small black one is, like, mine from way, way back, like, in high school. And the other ones they gave me, like, maybe last five years ago. So, when sometimes when I'm having problems making a decision, I just roll them. And then some of the... <laughs> And some of the rocks are one of the rock is from who is that the the fortune telling couple in Kamias Kim and Fastworm. Ah, oh, Fastworm. Kim and uh who's the guy? Ah Kimatanda. Yeah, yeah. So the the stone is 
from them. Yeah. Usually, Patrick, I ask them like, uh, yes or no. So, oh, okay. usually, it's uh, like add number of yes. So, I see. Number, no. oh. So, Jerome, do you <laughs> remain COVID free because of this lucky charm? <laughs> so far, yes. So far, yes. <laughs> Very good yes. for you. <laughs> yes, power balance, but anting, they say, anting. They say power balance is like the imitation of Python. So Python is more the more authentic one. Also, when I went to Japan during the residency, I went looking for this because I think it's uh, Japanese made. But then there's a there's like a Japanese brand Rakuten, I think, that also have ion. Then I managed to find one in the in the like department store, but it's so expensive there. <laughs> yeah, we have some comments in the chat box. Mm, yeah, I saw, I saw. Yeah. From Steve, I remember that band Power Balance in mm. Bakularan, they are selling fake one. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Before and, they also had like uh, stalls in malls. Very expensive, like three thousand, five thousand for a necklace. Well, well, how much did you pay for yours? This one I managed to find somewhere in a in a OLX, like a lo local online secondhand shopping. Like I think two hundred, three hundred for each. Mm. Jerome. Do you have to perform certain rituals after buying them to make them effective? No, not really. But they said, the, like the seller said, he gave me one of the power balance bracelets. He said, so it has a sticker, like a shiny foil sticker. He said that that when you're stressed over time, the sticker will fade. But I don't know. I, I, oh. did, I didn't use the power balance because I feel it's fake. So. I just keep it. Placebo <laughs> effect. Yes. Oh. Uh, oh, during the full moon. I don't yeah. know. Oh. Uh, I read somewhere that they need to recharge in the in the sunlight, but I kept mine. I'm still keeping mine in the sunlight, but. It seems like it's more damaged than recharge. Like it started to have cracks. <laughs> okay, we move on to the next image. There. Are... Mm. Ah, this one is a. Uh, so I say, like last year I started to listen to some hypnosis audios going to sleep. But then I kept on like breaking my you know, earphones. So I look mm -hmm. online for alternatives. So this one is a Bluetooth sleep mask. So there's like a small speaker inside. So yeah, sometimes when I'm having trouble sleeping, I use that. That's nice. Shappy, <laughs> shappy. Ah, shappy, shappy. Yeah, a, yeah. It gets a bit getting used to because it's quite bulky on the ear, so if you're a side sleeper, it can be hard. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay, thank you. We go next. Ah, so this one, I'll just, <laughs> because we have a dog and she sheds a lot, so I started collecting his <laughs> fresh, mm. fresh sheddings. Yeah. And then after a time, I started collecting my fresh headings too because I cut, I shave my own hair. So I started. <laughs> and then I still also keep uh, my nail clippings. My nail, my nail clippings in that small petroleum one. So I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I'm keeping them. Like I asked, who is this? There's a local artist that paints a lot of cactuses and she has she has a she has artworks using human si hair. Pin. Oh si pin, pin, pin mm. also. I told her that I have some some of my hair if you can if you you want to use it. So far. <laughs> For compost, uh, I'm not really into 
garden. But I, oh, what does your mom say? Hair? I oh. thought they don't degrade. Hair, <laughs> hair and nails, because may keratin siya. Yay! Oh, okay. So cactus so, and hair, naman tama. Cactus and hair. Oh. <laughs> or Jerome, you can make a charm from from the collected uh, sheddies. Ah. <laughs> Jerome charm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, so this one I'm currently working with John, who's here, curator art space. So it's like a first time for me to work with a curator in a long term basis. Like I think we've been talking for five months now. I mean, it's been very helpful because I've been having like a, I've been questioning my art practice a lot, and so far it's he's helping me like navigate through some of the challenges and now I'm very excited with the my art practice and uh I just say like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty soon we will be posting my practice my new works there mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I think Jerome has video to share mm. also wait a second okay Uh, so, so this uh, is our dog. So recently he's been scratching a lot too much. Aww. So he has a cone. And you can see like there's there's a kitchen. Looks sad. Yes, because he wants to go out already. Because we so we go out in the morning and in the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerome. Thank you, Jerome. What's the name of your dog? Bruce. Ah? He's uh, Bruce. He's part of Bruce. Col yeah, he's part of Cologne. Part of what? Mm. Cologne. Cologne? What do you mean? I, I, the collective. Ah, uh, ah the Bruce. Uh, no. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jerome. And um, maybe later we can... Uh, no. Ask more question about Bruce and the <laughs> mat of Jerome. <laughs> Next, we will, I know, pick one for the next. It's you, hey. Wait a second. Okay. Hey, yes. Yeah, you hey, yeah. Yes. Um, so I want to show some images from my ma. It's not a studio, just my ma, my my room. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> it's a uh, one kind of uh, old coin. Mm -hmm. uh, the French had colonized this uh, in the Chinese uh, peninsula from uh, mm -hmm. uh, 1887 to. Uh, the uh, 18, no, 1954. So, mm -hmm. my, of course, my for uh, a short period of time, uh, Japan also temporarily uh, ruled, uh, uh, ruled here. And uh, so that's why uh, in Vietnam, we can see a variety of uh, French culture. So, <clears throat> My, my, for example, my coffee, or pudding, or French bread. Oh. Right. So, my recently, I found uh, in the cafe. Uh, my now, uh, every morning, I went. To, uh, I'm going. To, uh, I go to cafe to have a breakfast. So at that time, uh, I, I'm, I order the pudding. It's very nice to eat. <laughs> Okay, yes. Mm. Yes. Oh, it's uh, now I'm wearing this uh, gym uniform. <laughs> this one. Mm. So, uh, the end of my presentation, I showed uh, one photo of the stadium. 
So in Vietnam, I found uh, many, many Olympics logo mark. <laughs> so about uh, this uniform, it's not for national team in Vietnam. Mm. <laughs> just uh, uh, sportswear of uh, my local university. The Fue University of the Science University, they, uh, it's a uniform, or just a uniform. So uh, I really worried, um, wondering why uh, the Vietnamese people like this kind of, uh, like uh, this Olympic logos. Well, in Japan, it's quite difficult to find uh, to the logo mark because uh, to use uh, Olympic logo, we have to pay much money <laughs> because of license. But uh, in Vietnam, it's very, very common. Uh, the Vietnamese use this logo uh, as uh, just uh, one kind of symbol of sports. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, the training room or the training facility or uh, sports club, they also use this logo mark. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's just my imagination. The logo mark, uh, uh, well, the first three, it was used by the French people. Mm -hmm. uh, de Bertin, uh, he was a French and uh, the founder of the modern Olympics. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. many uh, old buildings or facilities were built by the French people during the uh, colonized era. So that, that's why I think there is a you know, kind of a relationship, uh, but uh, I'm not sure. Okay, it's an uh, episode about this photo. Mm -hmm. Okay, we go to the next. Mm. Yes, and uh, um, in, uh, in May, uh, in Vietnam, there was a very big election. Mm -hmm. So it was um, one kind of propaganda poster of the election. Uh, I had the, the number of voting rate is, uh, was almost 100% in Vietnam. It was <laughs> very interesting for me because in Japan, it, it, it's quite low in Japan. So uh, maybe the reason <laughs> was, one of the reason is uh, this propaganda poster. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, how can I say? Um, such kind of expression of the, the uh, expression is, uh, was very interesting for me. Mm. So very, I, I got a very big uh, inspiration. It's the ghost of Ho Chi Minh. Oh, yeah. ah, <laughs> I think the vote. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah we can see many, many Ho Chi Minh. Uh, yeah, it's very common in here. <laughs> Ho Chi Minh is putting in uh, an illegal vote because he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's already dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He doesn't have rights to vote. Yeah. <laughs> okay, move forward. Okay. Um, and uh, no, even <laughs> yeah, I had a uh, one workshop in at the university. So even uh, the situation of COVID, uh, <laughs> I could I could uh, I could. Uh, do this workshop. So mm -hmm. uh, I tried to connect uh, with the, connect uh, the Olympic and uh, the Tokyo Olympic and uh, the situation in Fue. So I asked the, asked the participants, uh, they are my students, mm -hmm. to design the um, Tokyo Olympic medal. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, Next photo is uh, uh, one of the works they made. <laughs> yeah, I asked them uh, to 
design, uh, to design, uh, uh, how can I say, focusing on the Tokyo Olympics under the COVID situation. Okay. So that's why uh, they designed a variety of uh, um, medals like this. And in the design, but the, the participants changed the uh, alphabet of O to the face with mask. <laughs> but I think uh, Vietnam didn't participate in this Olympics this time, right? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, participate, participated. Uh, not so many. Um, there are. Two, ten, almost ten. Mm. Ten athletes uh, participated. But I think it, it's also very uh, interesting for me. In, in Japan, the Olympic uh, is the uh, most exciting, most exciting uh, event. But in Vietnam, my uh, in Philippines also, they have uh, mm. sea, sea games. Mm. The mm -hmm. game uh, is, uh, how can I say, more important for them. Yeah. I think such kind of a different situation is also very interesting for me. Okay, and uh, please change to next. Next. And uh, uh, based on their design, mm. uh, I asked uh, mm -hmm. ask to make uh, Olympic medals. Mm. And, uh, mm. uh, during my uh, stay in during my stay my, during my stay in Vietnam, uh, I'm trying to make uh, uh, video work uh, by using this medal. Almost uh, 15, uh, 15 students participated in my workshop, uh, and uh, I choose uh, six designs for the medal. Mm -hmm. Right. So this medal is big. How big is this medal? Yeah, more. It's <laughs> almost uh, seventy centimeters. Mm -hmm. Oh well. <laughs> and it's quite heavy. <laughs> so what's your plan with this medal? Are you going to bring back to Japan? Yeah. yeah yes, I hope. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> you, 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 you should wear it at the airport when you come home. <laughs> hey, you, hey, uh, where did you gather the the medals? You gather the 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 metal. Uh, did you melt? Did you cast this? Ah, yes. Uh, it, uh, so next photo is uh, uh, showing the process of making it. Oh, oh, yes. Wow. So I asked uh, the sculpture studio to mm -hmm. make the medal. Wow. Um, so it's a, how can I say, uh, my fiberglass. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Fiberglass uh, they often use, uh, but a variety of uh, materials they can use. Mm -hmm. Or the uh, statue of the Buddha, or statue of Christ, or statue of Ho Chi Minh, mm -hmm. a variety of uh, a, variety, a variety of sculpture they are making. It was very interesting with, as well. Is it heavy the metal? The metal? Uh, heavy? Okay. Yes, metal. The metal. Uh, metal. Yes, more. Yeah, at first I thought it. it it was right, but uh, almost uh, 10, kilo, 10 kilograms. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's fiber glass. <laughs> Very heavy. Okay. Oh, ah, this one. Yeah, different one. So in the, well, it's just, uh, how can I say, I want to show the situation. In the kitchen, um, there is a... <laughs> very small altar in, in, in Vietnam it's very common More, every kitchen has a such kind of altar mm. or on the street or some or somewhere mm. there are many many uh, altars and um, my Buddhism culture is the same with Japan but uh, they have a, a different one it's very 
am I interesting for me? I want to explore or I want to seek much more. Uh, but this time uh, I don't have uh, have much uh, enough uh, time. So mm. maybe uh, just uh, I'll keep it. Mm. Okay. Do we have more photographs here? Mm. Yes, it's uh, maybe it's last, last one. one. Mm. Okay, um, now I'm uh, planting uh, avocado. Uh, mm. avocado. <laughs> To nice. eat from the seeds. So in Japan, I also have the uh, same uh, same one, but uh, in Vietnam, uh, to eat avocado is also common. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, now, uh, it's, uh, how can I say, under the COVID situation, I could not find my residency or um, uh, actually I could not uh, focus on my artistic uh, uh, activity. So, but to plant to something or to cook uh, in my room, such kind of, um, how can I say, uh, to, to keep such kind of lifestyle is uh, very important to, to have to make a communication with uh, the uh, specific area or specific situation or country uh, was important, uh, I thought. Uh, so. Okay, that's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And we wish, we wish to see the tree of avocados <laughs> after the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, hmm. How long more will you be in Vietnam, you heard? Yeah. Mark, actually, uh, just uh, only more two weeks. Mm. I have mm. to go back to Japan. Mm. Are you looking forward to going back or would you rather stay in Vietnam if you had an option? Yeah, but, but before I wanted to uh, stay here, but mm. the situation um, it's becoming uh, not good. Mm. So my, in here, there are, so this morning, uh, mm -hmm. some uh, lockdown happened in, this, in my city. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I'm uh, worrying uh, I cannot go back to Japan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or not. Uh, maybe I won't uh, come back here after COVID situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Good luck, you. Yuhei. And we will get another artist for the next. It's Neo. Neo. Um, so we start with images, Neo. We also have videos for you. Uh, this one, uh, this one is uh, another project I recently made with Miro Kasama. Mm. It's a small publication that uh, kind of compiled our um, quarantine musings, like mm. things we were thinking about while uh, under quarantine last year. But um, we wrote it uh, in such a way that it's hard to tell which one of us is uh, telling a, par a particular story. Mm. Yeah. So I have a few copies lying around it. And uh, Thank I thought, hmm? What is Lena? Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll put one aside for you, Lena. Yay, thank yeah, and I, and I was thinking if this was an actual studio visit, I could give some people who were visiting mm -hmm. a copy. Exchange tayo yung dream book ko. Sige. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Uh, and then uh, these sculptures, uh, I made these while um, I was doing a residency in Vietnam. Um, uh, and while I was doing my ghost story collecting project, uh, Don't Sweep at the Wake, I was also um, trying to do ceramic sculptures. 
And uh, in, ex uh, in exchange for some of the stories I received, uh, I made a sculpture that had uh, something to do with their story. Um, for these sculptures, uh, they were both ghost stories that revolved around um, hands. Uh, the one below, the one with the red marking, it came from uh, the story connected to it came from a painter that was haunted by a ghost uh, that was just a hand. So he told me a story about his, stu his, his studio that whenever he fell asleep um, and then uh, all the lights would be out, he would feel something crawling on his arm. Oh my gosh. And then uh, at first, he, he thought maybe I just uh, left the window open. Maybe it's mm. just the cat feeling mm. my arm. And then uh, he told me that the hand of whatever was uh, touching him uh, became stronger. Mm -hmm. And then he threw whatever it was to the ground. Mm -hmm. And he felt like uh, it was a hand. Like he, he told me he momentarily held hands with a... <laughs> with a disconnected hand Ooh. and then when he, when he opened the light there was nothing there but he was sure he was holding hands with someone in the studio what if that hand was finishing his paintings ghost <laughs> <laughs> assistant assistant <laughs> ghost painter ghost painter <laughs> ghost painter instead of a ghost writer and then the story of the hand above, um, it was told to me by a Vietnamese artist who could, uh, he told me she could see ghosts. Mm. And then uh, she told me a story where she was missing her dead grandmother. And then in Vietnam, uh, I found out that you were only supposed to visit graves at a certain time. You can't go to the graves at 12 p.m. because the kind of the spirit watcher is going around. And then he will punish you for going to the grave at that time. But 12 p.m. You mean like 12 noon? And yeah? 12 p.m. You mean 12 noon or 12 naga? Right, 12 noon. 12 noon. 12 noon. 12 noon. Oh, no, ah, talaga. Tanghal. Yeah. Okay. But she went to the graveyard to visit Aka, her grandmother at 12 noon. Aka pa kasi. They're not yet ready <laughs> to face wait, visitors. Wait. <laughs> she, she told That's me that great. while she was uh, at her grandmother's grave, she felt cold all over. And then until she went home, uh, she couldn't get rid of the cold feel feeling in her arm. Mm -hmm. She told me the ghost, like the ghost custodian of the graveyard went home with her and was living in her uh, arm somehow. Hello? Yeah. Did she get uh, rid of that? Sensation mm, eventually, eventually? eventually she did. Like uh, she was telling me that the cold was spreading to throughout her body. But then mm -hmm. she she finally talked to a teacher who could um who knew about uh, supernatural rituals. And then she told me that her teacher put his hand over her head, and then she could feel the cold leaving her. But then her teacher oh. got sick afterwards. Oh, and so it uh, got transferred like, to her. Yeah, it's like the teacher absorbed whatever the ghost uh, gave her. So, paniyon, the teacher needs somebody else to transfer it to. <laughs> Maybe she didn't tell me how it ended up. With her it's like a curse. <laughs> Maybe go back to the cemetery. Yeah, it's like a curse. You hey, you can try. You still have time. Oh my god. <laughs> you can try tomorrow. <laughs> lunch time. Bring lunch. Lunch time. Yeah. <laughs> the security force is checking. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> <of> quarantine. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then this book, uh, I really like this book. Kubao Pagkagat ng Dilim. The title translates into Kubao When Darkness Bites. It loosely translates into something like that. It's a compilation of um, horror stories 
Tagalog horror story. And then all of the stories have settings uh, around Cubao. Oh. Yeah, Maybe we, we live CSO. nearby. It's a uh, Tony Perez house is in front of Artery. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, oh, still? Is he still staying there? I'm not sure, but the, I think bef- I, I don't know now. <laughs> but he's from Cobao, no? Yeah, he's from mm-hmm. Cobao. And I really like What this um, compilation of stories. They're re- really well written. And the. Uh, uh, I really like them a lot because uh, the settings are real places. Like um, mm. maybe Mark and Mayumi's house are ha- <laughs> are just around one of the settings, and one of the stories actually takes place on just the street next to us. Mm. What's yeah. the history of Cubao? Is it uh? Is there a lot of people that died in Cubao? <laughs> No. Excuse me. They say previously it was um like a hot spot to practice witchcraft. Wow. Oh. That's why Is it because safe. a lot of trees, there used to be a lot of trees in Cubao. Mm. So it's quite enchanted. Ah. Yeah, and they say it's Cuba Cubao. Like from Cuba. the word Cuba, Cuba. It means mm. hunchback. Mm-hmm. They say if you trace out the shape of Kubao, it's in the shape of the hunchback. But I don't know what that has anything to do with which witchcraft. <laughs> or, or parang maburol ata. Like, uh, Hili. 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 I see. Kasi in, uh, there's a house, the Miranila. Hmm. It's uh, in Kubao. And it's the highest point, they said, in Kubao. I don't know if it's real, but uh, uh, but it's creepy there. I've been uh, there. The Miranila, oh, it's dark, <laughs> full of what's, old houses. What's there, Lena? Um, because Arvin and Bobo used to stay there, of course. Um, it's surrounded by a lot of balete trees, uh. and the houses are being rented out, but they still have. Uh, they're very old. Sometimes I don't know, parang. It gets really dark at night because they don't have that much light mm. in it. Mm. It's also a museum. Yeah. It's, it's also a museum. Mm. Minute, so. mm. Maybe many secrets. I don't uh, know. <laughs> and also military camp, right? Yes. Somehow, because it's quite near. Because I know Mowell Fund also has a lot of um, ghost stories. Mm. There is. Yeah. That's can, one. That's a great way to explore one aspect of that place, the Kubao. And then Tony Sp- eh, Tony Perez is a spirit questor, mm. de ba? Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I think Canade knows uh, Tony Perez. Canade met. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Before I met him, I I visited him. <laughs> I it's think in Cuba, I, right? I, I, I'm a friend of him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In front of Adderi. Yeah. yeah. Mm. He's he's always there. Mm. If you pass by, you just say hello to Pele. Mm. <laughs> At I re- night. I really want to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's way past curfew already. So we cannot. <laughs> And then the ghost, and then the horror stories here, I think, are based on uh, rumors. Then he re- wrote them into fiction. So I think there's a kind of a, an underlying truth in the stories. And I think it's uh, uh, much of the time it's like that with ghost stories that you can find an underlying truth within the like uh, the story itself. Mm. Nice. Angela shared something about the the adaptation of the book to a stage play, eh? Stage mm. adaptation, yeah. Wow. Bakal nice. Leo, you can have a podcast already um, about mm-hmm. these ghost stories that you have collected because it's it's quite popular. Uh, it's quite a popular topic mm-hmm. on podcast. I tried recording one with a few friends about mm. the topic was about uh, aswang, mm. like the Filipino vampire, mm. werewolf, witch hybrid. Mm. 
Yeah, maybe, maybe. Sige, we look yeah. forward to it. Okay, we move on to the next. Oh, this is a, this is a photo of my father and my grandmother. Because in my spare time, I like to dig through uh, family photos and family documents. And this one I found uh, recently. Uh, this one, my my father and my grandmother are posing. Uh, in front of a poster of Mao. <laughs> it's in the Philippines. It's in the. Uh, I asked my father where, where this was taken. It was apparently downstairs in the living room. Oh. 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 In the living room. Where's the poster now? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> but I found it strange because my father always said that even when he was in the Communist Party, he hate, hated Mao. Mm. And it's mm. ironic for my grandmother to be. Uh, posing in in front of the poster like this because uh, his husband, my grandfather, fought in uh, the Korean War mm. uh, against the communist Chinese mm. in North Korea, and she mm. looks so happy in the photo. It's so strange. Maybe the joke irony. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> irony. Like, like the face of the father is not so happy. <laughs> He's yeah. actually smirking. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> So, mm, so a lot of uh, the time under quarantine, I've been looking for, uh, looking through uh, fil uh, family documents. Mm. <clears throat> okay, thank you. This one. Mm. Uh, this one is a, this one is a project I made while I was in college. It was my thesis. Mm. It's a coffin. Mm. Uh, because uh, I wanted to make uh, a coffin that you could use while you were still alive. Because I thought back then it was such a waste to buy a coffin and then just bury it in the ground. Like I thought of uh, how could I make a coffin useful while someone was still alive. So this one, it's in my room. Uh, I use it as a storage. Yeah, what right now it's, it's full of books, <laughs> and it's uh, measured to my to my width and height. <laughs> so if I <laughs> so if I need a <laughs> coffin, they can just use this. It's like a self portrait or something. Yeah. <laughs> Neo, have you always been fascinated with the spirits and ghosts ever since? Mm, yeah, I think so. Ever since I was young. I really enjoyed uh, hearing those stories from relatives and from neighbors. Have you personally uh, encountered some ghosts? Yeah, I think a few times, but I've never seen one. Mm. And my mother actually told me the other day that uh, the ghost here is back at the house. Like uh, at 3 a.m. Uh, yesterday, she told me that her door was locked, but someone opened it, slammed it open. Wow. Slammed it open. Crazy. Uh... <laughs> and then last year, the, the, the ghost became so prominent that my mom had to make up uh, like a, a, her own ritual to try to make it leave. Mm. Mm. She just thought of that ritual. Yeah, she, she made it up. Yeah. Interesting. We have photographs here. Uh, these are uh, fermentation projects. Like, uh, I always have something fermenting around the house. Uh, the one on the left is I'm making hot sauce and then tipache, like a fermented pineapple drink on the left. And you also make kimchi, right? Yeah, also make kimchi. Yeah, kimchi is good, man. <laughs> so if I have someone come over, I usually some give them something I've made, usually fermented. And then this one uh, is a painting. It's a charcoal painting my friend made. Uh, he was together with me in the residency in Vietnam. Mm. 
So what would happen there was every night uh, we would all gather in the living room and then the the other ar- artists in the residency would listen to the stories I would I've collected. And then this uh, particular artist, his name is Simon Meda. He's Belgian. He got in, into the story so much that he started uh, drawing them. Mm-hmm. So, this was his version of the story of uh, mm-hmm. the girl who was visiting her grandmother in the mm-hmm. cave. There's a dinosaur card at the bottom. Oh, that's mm. not on. I can not get that. Did you just put it there? Is it that part of the world? <laughs> nice touch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, next. From my, uh, and then this is from uh, one of my projects in Hachinohe with mm-hmm. Yuhei. Uh, while I was there, I was collecting photos of windows mm-hmm. because I wanted to get capture a sense of uh, how people were living in Hachinohe, and I wanted to sort of glance that by looking through their windows. Mm-hmm. So I was always uh, walking around the neighborhoods, uh, taking photos. And then uh, in a secondhand Japanese uh, shop, I saw that figurine. Mm. Like it's a man uh, holding a book to his face and also holding an umbrella. Mm. I thought uh, that's what I looked like going around the neighborhood mm. because I was always writing something down on a notebook and holding an umbrella. Mm. Is it always raining? Is it always? It raining? was always raining the first half of the month mm-hmm. I was there. Mm-hmm. And that string was from uh, Yuhei's project. Mm-hmm. Like he he smelted the aluminum, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Oh. And uh, do, do you think some differences from uh, uh, the window photo from inside and from outside? This yeah, photo is from outside. Right? Yeah, it's ironic now because I'm stuck just mm. from my window view. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I kind of miss. That... Hmm? Yeah, but I mean, don't the neighbors or people catch you because it's kind of an invasion of privacy, right? Mm, nobody <laughs> through nobody. their windows. <laughs> but there's not much people when you were when you're doing that. Yeah, I was expecting like people to complain, but but uh, hardly anyone was around. Like uh, it had like a kind of a ghost town feel. Yeah, yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. Ghost again. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like lurking around the neighborhood like a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> ghost patrol. <laughs> Let's see. So is this the last image? Neo. Yeah. We have two videos, right? Oh, yeah. What's that from your back? It's like someone. Jerome. Jerome's cow. Cow. Yes, thank you. Cow. Cow. Ah, window. Ah, window. Which one do you see? It's on the side. No. This one? Yes. Yeah, and then this is my window view right now. Mm. Because mm. a lot of the time when I don't want to work, I just stare out the window mm. and look at the mango tree. Mm. And I think I owe a lot to the mango tree because I feature it a lot in my re- recent projects. Mm. Like it appears in a lot of my recent projects. It's in the front of the house. Mm, yeah. Um, There's no duende. Yeah. Mm, there is. There is. There okay. is. Someone, Capre. someone Capre. was. Uh, someone was possessed. Oh. Was this by the duende, not you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> who? 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 <laughs> who was possessed? Mm, someone who was uh, unfamiliar with the. Uh, I shared this story with the uh, rice brewing sisters, mm. and then 
some my brother invited um some people from outside to drink inside the house mm-hmm. and they nobody really um was really familiar mm-hmm. and there was this one guy who was uh, really noisy mm-hmm. he was uh, shouting mm-hmm. it was already around 2 a.m at the time mm-hmm. i was watching from the window mm-hmm. and then at one point he just stopped talking And then uh, all of the, his friends were laughing at him like, uh, you're so drunk, you can't even speak anymore. Mm. But he, wasn't, he was just uh, not moving. Mm. So they thought he was just sleepy. Mm. But then he started crawling on the ground. <laughs> And then he started smashing pots. Mm. Whoa. Mm. It, it was then that they thought it, he's not just drunk, something is wrong with him. Wow. And then the the whole situation reached until maybe 7 a.m. And when the sun was starting to rise, he was saying that I'm melting, I'm melting. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> And then a local a local um, priest came to take him away. Mm. And then when he came back that afternoon, he said that that guy offended something in the soil. Like some mm. elemental in the soil. Hindi mm. <laughs> nagtabi-tabi po. Oh, mm. you should have said yeah. tabi-tabi po. Wow. Okay, the other video. Last one. Uh, and then this was, I was doing this um, during the quarantine months last year. Mm. I tried uh, drawing my hand once, at least once a day. Mm. Uh, an alternative way of um, journal keeping. Mm. Using shodo. Shodo. Um, hmm? What shodo? The calligraphy. And then... No. I think Sorry. whatever pen I had. Ah. And I think I ran out of paper before the quarantine days were over. Mm. So there, there were more quarantine days than drawings. Mm. Lena, you're, you're keeping up how many quarantine days there are, right? 532 days <laughs> 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 I mean, I already, I also uh, considered or uh, counted the GCQ days. Uh, so ECQ, MECQ, GCQ, it doesn't really make <laughs> any difference at all anymore. <laughs> Just not being able to go out as much. I think that's that's how I quite qualified it. Yeah. Well. Okay, thank you, Neo. And uh, I think uh, we will have an overtime because everyone is having fun <laughs> so next <laughs> one is <laughs> Patrick. Patrick I realized I made the mistake of sharing the slides earlier but it's okay we can go in yeah. depth yeah. Uh, this one yeah, is... yeah, in depth. Uh, okay maybe yeah maybe I could speak a little bit of uh, the objects on these shelves um The skull that you see on that shelf is uh, made by two witches uh, called Fast Worms, uh, Kim and Dai. They actually visited, they visited the Philippines during the Camias Triennial last year. And uh, this is an interesting object because I studied under them during my master's program. And uh, they're two practicing witches and uh, they do a lot of uh, tarot reading um, so when they come to my studio normally we don't talk about the art we talk about <laughs> random <laughs> things <laughs> uh, which is kind of nice and refreshing because it makes makes it more casual and uh, more relaxing so we ended up 
becoming really good friends uh, besides being uh, you know, student teacher. And in the end we traded an artwork. I, I gave them a painting and uh, in exchange, I have this skull. And at first I was actually kind of afraid to put it out. Mm. <laughs> it took me a while to like kind of uh, display it. Because <laughs> mm. it's, it's such a... Skull. No, no, it's not, it's not. It's uh, made from ceramic, right? Yeah, it's, it's a ceramic Raku skull. Yeah, mm. that'd be funny if it was a real skull. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe from a skull of a turtle. <laughs> this is a spirit animal. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I guess the the figurine on the very top, the mm. headhunter. Mm. Uh, that's from my grandpa, and uh, I took it from their house in Bulacan. Mm. When I visited, when I first visited back in the Philippines in 2012, mm. um, and uh, I don't know, it just kind of stuck in. It just kind of struck me when I saw the figure because I've seen it as a child growing up, and no one's living in that house anymore. So I just sort of like took it with me back here in Canada. Mm. So sort of like this weird portal. When I see him, I kind of see my ancestors through this. Uh, trophy. Uh, it's made that, of wood. Yeah, it's carved wood, probably like from the Cordillera region. I'm not sure where the where it originated. Uh, and then that blue lobster down there is from Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, a figurine. I f forget the name of the neighborhood, Akihabara, where it's mm -hmm. all like those uh, machines. Mm -hmm. The toy machines, yeah. Electronics area. Yeah. So mm. I met up with uh, Makiko. I think Makiko was here mm. in, the, in the room. Uh, I did a mentorship with her in Japan. That was sort of a nice, uh, yeah, just a nice token of like different things. Um, oh, yeah, there's an anting anting that I made there. I think Marky also made something similar with that pyramid oh, in eye. Mm. yeah yeah also very much into the occult and like esoteric objects mm. um, so i very very much resonate with neo's uh, ghost stories <laughs> yeah okay. next mm. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, oh my God. So I've had this pet since 2008, yeah. pre-pandemic pet. It's a weather loach. So it's a fish that can detect the weather. Mm -hmm. If it's changing, uh, they could feel the, uh, the pressure mm -hmm. and they go, they go crazy in the water. Mm -hmm. Um, and I ended up giving it to my parents because I was moving in different cities and uh, and then they named it Haba. King Haba. Mm. <laughs> because it's long. Because <laughs> it's really long. It's like uh, it's like the size of a you know string bean. Mm. It's a it's a vegetarian fish. It eats oh. only vegetables. Yeah. What's it perched on? That's a What's heater, it? aquarium heater. heater. Yeah. Whoa. yeah, because it gets cold here, so we also need to heat up the aquarium. <laughs> yeah. Di naman naluluto. Maybe. I mean, the tail is kind of turning pink. <laughs> but he likes sitting on it. <laughs> yeah, he likes to hang out there. And... Uh, I think it could live for 15 years. Mm. So maybe... Wow. Yeah, it could... Maybe it has like two, three more years. I hope it goes longer. But, you know. It's a bad because carps um, tend to live long too. Like, I don't know, 20 years, 100 years? Carps. Oh, really? Yeah. I know goldfish lives for 30 years. So... I they're know, like they real... Do so you have this when very small? Sorry, you had this when you he was still very small. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. When I bought him, he was like 
like tiny. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Did he sense um, that he has a different owner now? When I wonder. Yeah, I always wonder about how how <laughs> aquatic pets perceive reality or. <laughs> I know some fish, they recognize their owners, like mm. carps or goldfishes, yeah. Mm. But uh, maybe this one too, I'm not sure. I definitely feel it's like I could be <laughs> yeah. But, when, you know, like looking at the eyeball of this guy, like I feel like we're communicating sometimes, you know, mm. or like talking to each other, yeah. <laughs> 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 same old, same old. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is he alone inside the tank? He's alone. No, there's a there's a janitor fish in his tank that's mm. like also big, also like around ten years old. Mm. Uh, his his name's Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> 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 My parents named these animals. I, I did not name them these names. So janitor. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, the janitor fish is kind of doing the opposite. It's not cleaning the tank. It's like like shitting a lot. So. Maybe it's retired already. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I took a photo of it, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really advise not any. Uh, if if you ever want to start an aquarium, don't buy a janitor fish because they, they need they need a, a really big space. Yeah, and they need a lot. They shit a lot. They get big. They get yeah. They get like like arm size. You know. Yeah, I know in Marikina. Marikina has a lot of them. Marikina yeah. River. It was introduced. It was not in Bimi. So yeah. when it floods, um, they overflow and you can see them, you know, just flat on the ground everywhere. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think they're was, eating them too, no? They, they're cooking it. Yeah, because it, they cannot find any, any tilapia. That's right. what they resort to eating. That was... Someone suggested, why don't they make shoes out of it? Because <laughs> 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 yeah. I mean, they, yeah, I mean, there's so many of them. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe waterproof too. <laughs> <laughs> the Johnny's. The Johnny's. You have Johnny's. Johnny's. Yeah. <laughs> you have a project waiting for you at home, Patrick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna start skinning that fish. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah, so this is a studio that I just recently left. Uh, this was a windowless studio with 30 other artists. <laughs> 30, yeah, so it's really big. Yes. And it's like a, it's like a commune, um, and it was kind of uh, it got too complicated because there was too many of us, and it was trying to be some kind of like, a, a, what do you call it? like a horizontal structure in yeah. uh, in terms in terms of governance. So, yeah. I mean, it was kind of nice, but also it was challenging. So I had to move. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I'm sure the scheduling for working could yeah. be a bit short. So, <laughs> yeah, there's just too many cooks in the kitchen, I think. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. It was cheap. And that's what made it cheap because there was a lot of labor from each other. Yeah. But now I moved to a space with just seven people. So mm. it's much more manageable. Much and, that's there's also ghosts here. <laughs> yeah, I need this big fan because there's no window. No. Um, and it's kind of hard to... And it's and it gets really cold as well. Uh, so sometimes I sleep there uh, when I get too tired. But um, 
Yeah. It's sort of a weird, uh, weird space. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see the, the lights here. It's like very DIY because uh, <laughs> my, the lights in my studio broke down. <laughs> No one really, no one really helped me to set up lights. So I just sort of uh, made a daisy chain of extension cords. Mm -hmm. um, whatever works, right? mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Whatever works. <laughs> <laughs> and then this that's still the same studio. This is still the same space, no? Yeah, that's still the same space. Oh. Yeah, just uh, further back. And then mm. you can see there's like plastic tarps around it mm. On, mm. The, on the ceiling because mm. uh, there's a leak from the roof. Mm. So water was coming in mm. to my studio. So I was like, yeah, it's really time to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then there was a mouse that was eating all my works. Yeah, it was just there kind of like so many signs uh, already. <laughs> yeah, there was too many uh, elements, <laughs> too many elements that were collaborating with the works. <laughs> <laughs> too many collaborators. Uh, yeah, unwarranted collaborators. The ecosystem. Uh, oh yeah, this uh, this poster that you see attached on the sculpture. On the red sculpture on the back, mm -hmm. uh, that's the cave in uh, Binangonan Rizal, mm -hmm. and, uh, the Petroglyph. the petro petroglyphs. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was a really uh, cool field trip I did. I've so never I made... been. Oh. Really? Oh, you should oh, go. I should. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. Is it open? Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, there's no COVID there. <laughs> <laughs> Not in the cave. Not in, the cave. Safe in the cave. Yeah. Yeah. The last just time. Don't, we... Just don't touch the bats, no. The last time we, we went there, the 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 guide was the security guard, so mm. he is explaining the no. Oh, that's the, nice. Uh, Nobody just uh, nice. The pet. That the forest. I know it's kind of not taking care of that much, hey, because it's yeah. just exposed, exposed in the air. Mm. Yeah, tourist guard, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good occupation. Winner. Okay, well, next. <laughs> the last image. Uh, yes, last image. Uh, yeah, I mean food. Always like to cook. Uh, I was mentioning earlier about the lechon belly that I uh, really mastered. Mm. Yeah. Next so, time. Next opening. Ooh, next grand opening. 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 Next grand uh, when whenever I can uh, come back home, actually it's funny because I feel like every time I eat Filipino food, it's sort of a, also a, like another portal back home. So yeah, I try to cook food. Uh, Pala, Patrick, what do you think yeah. of um? I'm going to DTI here is planning to standardize adobo and other Filipino dishes. What do you think? DTI. DTI, Department of Trade and Industry. Standardize? <laughs> How are they going to standardize dishes? Yeah, that's what everyone is <laughs> wondering about the two. <laughs> and, you know, and like um, the Filipino diaspora, like you mm. can cook your own adobo anywhere. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> uh, no, regional differences, like. Yeah. Canada version. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. I mean, I don't know if that's actually uh, effective. But maybe, yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, the weird thing is, like, I feel like Filipino food, for example, here in Canada is not very popular. Mm. Uh, it's, it's not still, very popular. No, it's still kind of exotic for mm. people here. So, and I think they find it to, to have too much meat. Mm. Not oh, enough. Yeah. <laughs> not enough vegetables. Not healthy. <laughs> yeah, it's not healthy. <laughs> Especially with that let's and belly. I mean to say only words, you know. There's lemongrass inside. That's vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't eat it. <laughs> um, Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. I, I really I re that's my wish uh, to have gatherings again mm, where we can yeah. share food again. Yeah. Me too, us too here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The last lesson we shared was uh, in the Pamias Trail. Mm. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. 2020, yeah, yeah. And everyone was like, yeah. <laughs> That's the last <laughs> 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 It's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm planning to start a pop up restaurant. Uh, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, at a um, just like a side gig because I mm. really, I really love cooking. So maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll get to experiment some new, new recipes. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So when mm. you guys come visit to, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, we'll do some cooking. I hope. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Master Chef. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. And uh, the last but not the least, Denver. Yay! Yes. Yay. The last dinosaur. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Denver, the last dinosaur. Yes, that old cartoons. <laughs> Okay, so I'm sharing these images from my studio. Uh, so the first image is, I actually have it as well here beside mm. me. <laughs> Can you see? So this is the um, Black Nazarene statue. It's very hollow. I don't know what's made. Um, but this one, um, um, this is part of the altar that my grandma um built in the here in this house so when she left i i actually kept that altar space for her so um aside from occupying other parts of this the house studio that's the part that i always kept it clean or you know i always light candles um whenever there are like you know um to pray for someone or you know those things so um so i'm not really that religious but I think this black Nazarene is very significant um, because my, my, my dad um, always have this like he has a smaller version of the black Nazarene and he puts it in all of our cars and then in the in in their bedroom um, and also I remember back in college um, uh, we, I had this experience of um, part. It's part of our course. Um, the course title is social psychology, and our professor asked us to observe the Black Nazarene um, fiesta at that mm -hmm. time. So we did this project where we actually it was a group project. So we we were assigned to um, immerse with the crowd. So we did interviews about how they got into being a, um, what do you call that? Um, para mm. devotee. Devotee. Yeah, devotee yeah. of the Black Nazarene. So it's very interesting because only at that time I was able to have a you know, better understanding of how mm. um, Filipinos are getting engaged, especially with um, religion. So mm. especially the Black Nazarene, which is very interesting since that was the only time I me and my classmates were really immersed inside the actual events. Like we attended the mm -hmm. um, 
the vigil. Mm. Um, so, and then we interviewed people who are faith healers mm. and asked their first, which is truly like the basis of it all. It's their first positive experience when it comes to religion. Like, like they stick to it because they associate it with their um, being healed mm. from their um, illnesses mm. or getting good luck. Mm-hmm. Um, like they pray for they pray at Chiapo and the Black Nazarene for them to for them for their wishes to be fulfilled and then it happened so that's the usual thing mm-hmm. um, and so it's, it was very interesting um, for me and you know it's, it's still here it's still present in my studio the Black Nazarene mm-hmm. so another photo um, is this one. <laughs> so this one is uh, also associated with my grandma. Mm. Because um, from time to time, she would send items mm. from the US. Mm. Like mostly secondhand stuff, which mm. I don't know where she got it from. But she usually sends me like a lot of sewing materials. Mm. And then she suddenly brought this, gave this to me. Like it's a small samurai. Mm. or samurai S design. Mm. It's weird because well, she, she put my name on it. Mm. And then it was, it's written here like at the back, Municipal Code Corporation Codification of Ordinance, Tallahassee, Florida. Mm. So I find it interesting why she gave, she, well, she, it's interesting. And it's it's quite, like a souvenir. Yeah. It's quite sharp, actually. Mm. Like, I, I cut open some fruits. Mm. <laughs> so it's something that I keep as well. Mm. Um, and some interesting stuff from my grandma, still. Mm. Um, and then the next item. Mm. Oh, this one. <laughs> this one is... Um, <laughs> This one is the best thing that I've learned in my residency in the UK. At oh. <laughs> I actually made one. <laughs> Galing. So this is what mm. do you have a name for this? You were like the toast, egg toast. I only see that in bread took me. <laughs> yeah. No. You can make this. <laughs> it's easy to make. Yes, it's very easy to make, but it. What's interesting? Well, um, this is the best thing that I've learned in the residency. Since <laughs> I don't usually cook at home, but I remembered I started. I started doing um preparing this during um last year when we when me, my family had COVID. My parents got sick, and our our helper also got sick, and so. At that time, they were already in the hospitals. And then me and my youngest sister stayed at home. So we were assigned to do everything. And that was the time where I can actually access the kitchen because, um, you know, my mom usually cooks. Mm. And so I remembered um, our neighbor, our, one of our neighbors gave us um, like a lot of loaf mm. bread. The, they gave us a lot of supplies. We're very thankful, and, but they gave us like three loaves of bread. <laughs> so very, very many loaves of bread. We were like two, and then me and my sister and the two dogs. So we were like, how can we eat this? <laughs> so um, I decided to, you know, recreate what I've learned in the residency with the toast bread egg in the middle. So it was very nice, and my sister actually liked it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm very happy the residency program was <laughs> for me, <laughs> for you. <laughs> oh, I miss the food in, in Hachinoa, particularly the things that we eat there and the uh, um, alcohol. <laughs> I want to apply so I can learn how to cook. <laughs> yes. Uh, next applicant. <laughs> Next applicant, you'll learn. Yes, it's yeah. very nice. <laughs> it's, it's fun to drink sake in, in cold weather. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Sake is good right now. 
ba? Hmm. Wala lang. Okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. Anyway, next picture. <laughs> so, the next picture is, is just um coffee. So, in my... Um, usually, when I wake up in the morning, I prepare coffee and that's what I have every morning. I, I usually just drink coffee um, and then go straight to lunch. So this has been a ritual for me, I think, particularly during the pandemic. So I do it from, um, like, from scratch. I mean, I ground fresh, be- uh, no, not fresh, like the beans. I have a small grinder and then a manual grinder, and then I prepare it um, and do it for myself mm. and it actually helps me with my allergies especially in the mm. morning um, black coffee helps um, elevate the symptoms of uh, morning allergies mm. so it's I, I don't know well that's also like my substance of choice I like caffeine a lot so yeah. um, next picture yeah, next <laughs> <Flat tops. laughs> so um yeah that's just simply like a, a very childhood um thing that i'm very attached with i like flat tops it's a chocolate um thing um so <laughs> me and my family actually shares flat tops like my dad and my sister and since my sister now bakes at home, she would put a lot of flat tops in the brownie batter mm. or cookies. <laughs> so, What's the just, you know, difference of flat tops and curly tops? Curly tops? <laughs> it's just the top. Like, I think it's just curly. <laughs> but it's, it's the very... same. Same. Yeah. Taste. Taste. Same taste. Same thing. I, I think, Ellie, I mean, the chocolate is... What I like about this is it's very the chocolate is very coarse. Mm. I think it's it's not as refined as any other you know like um, expensive chocolate. So I think it's really the best for me. It's not as sweet. And it, mm. it doesn't and it doesn't melt also. Mm. Yeah, very uh, conducive to climate here in the. Mm. <laughs> yung ba yung ano uh, yeah. yung uh, factory sa Edsa. Fire. Ata, Fire. yung Rico, oh, ayan, yeah. near um, in Cho, Cho <laughs> Boulevard. Oh, oh, near. It's near there. You can smell so from the outside. Mm. Mm. Talaga? Mm, when yeah. it's traffic. <laughs> from the bus. Oh, from the bus. So, ayun, very old school and very easy to eat kapag if I want to eat something sweet sa studio, mm. like work. So, yeah, next. <laughs> That's the secret of the platform. Yes. Oh. Oh, so, this one, it's the same with, um, oh. aside, um, this one, um, Jerome actually mentioned his own gathering of his own hair mm-hmm. when he cuts it. it. This actually was also my um, ritual for quite a while, like mm. way back, I think, 2015. Mm. Um, pero, but, um, I started collecting it officially, bro, I think in 2018. Mm. I put it in a plastic bag. Mm. Like I have this plastic wow. bag. And then I would label it with a piece of paper. Mm. When was the time I, the date and the time when I cut my hair. Mm. Um, so that the last time was last July 28, 2001. <laughs> Around 3 p.m. Wow. <laughs> when I cut my hair. So even though my parents actually own a salon, mm. they actually own a salon, I don't go there. I just cut my own hair. <laughs> so I still don't know what I was going to do with those. Uh, probably in the future, something that I would, I don't know, do. Mm. Um, I own. Okay. And... I think is this the last? last? Seems like it. Yeah, I think that's the last one. Yeah. That's all. Okay, thank you, Denver. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank you very much for this. So this is we, what we are envisioning or maybe trying to, to grasp how studio visit is now. So in like with this uh, very spontaneous conversation and linking different connections, uh, we want to open up this maybe more question or discussion or conversation, even though we are very over time. So if you have questions with, and I think Patrick is already 12 midnight in Canada. So okay. if he wants to stay, he's very much. Yeah, I can stay. Yeah, thank you. And yeah, I mean, it's nice also to see the, the similar and differences of how the artists we, most of the artists is also me collects a lot of things and just put it in the studio and let it be there i don't know how many years or times and then think of a project so i think we have some kind of like you know similar similarities on how studio also uh, become part of our practice, but also like Yuhei is not now in his studio, so the like adjustment he wants to do while in another place. So, yeah, maybe Mayumi can say something. I feel hungry now. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing Denver's um, bread. <laughs> What do you put on that? It's mayonnaise. What is it yes, called in so, Japanese? You hate um, toast. <laughs> Egg the toast. Egg toast. I don't. I I'm not sure. Do you put it in oven? I've never made it. I want to try. I um the the steps that I've learned is um usually since um in Japan the the bread, the loaf bread, mm. um, it's very thick, right? Mm. So what I did is I do, since here in the Philippines, we have thinner loaves of mm. bread. So I usually use two slices of bread and mm. then make, uh, I, I use a spoon to, what do you call this? Um, to flatten the middle, mm. the middle part, mm. so that you can make a, a sort of well. Mm. So we have to flat the middle. Sorry, mm. I <laughs> I was also hung hungry. Sorry. Mm. So yeah, you have to put um press it with a spoon and then you put a uh, mayonnaise in the sides like mm. building a wall, and then you put it in the oven. Um, then you heat it for quite a while until the I think the mayonnaise becomes more stable, much more mm. solid. Mm. And then if that's a bit, if the mayonnaise is a bit more um, getting um, more solid, mm. then you started cracking the egg in the middle. Mm. Um, uh, um, so, and then when you put the egg, then you, you then put it into the toaster um, as long as the the egg finally cooks. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and then that's it. I mean, I also put pepper and salt. Yeah, looks good. Mm -hmm. Will, like, Philippine-style menu work? Actually, mm. ako ano. <laughs> I use the magic mayo. Mm, yeah, yeah. We don't have Q, Q pie. Mm. QP. Mm. It's already gone, so mm. I just bought in the store mm. magic mayo. Mm. <laughs> nice, nice. Very nice. <laughs> it must be high calorie. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's true. Yeah, your hair. <laughs> Very uh, high cholesterol. Yes. Too much yes. mayo, egg. <laughs> Okay. Um. Does anyone would like to share anything? Um. Who are the next artists in the lineup? Okay. Mm. Let me share. Would you like to introduce Mark? Yeah. Uh, so for our next uh, studio visit number two, it's uh, it will be on September. 
September 11. And we invited Lear. Lear is a, is a duo uh, curator and uh, artist based from based in Yogyakarta. And another group, Thailand, but now based in Akita and Shinya Akutagawa, also based in Nara. Nara, Nara, Nara sorry. Oh. Uh, now based in Nara. And both of them also, we kind of worked with them before. So I think it's also nice to catch up with them. So if you have time, because uh, this now is more on to artist organizer or a uh, couple who are also curator and artist. So in that context, we want to know how they are now, especially now in the COVID time. So, of course, this is again supported by Japan Foundation and together with Design and Textile Art Museum, that PH. So, hope we you can be part of it also next September 11th. 